when we do uh, city plans and town plans, some of our clients ask us to target a specific industry that they want us to consider. And uh, oftentimes in the Philippines, it's tourism. And why not? Because we have so many beautiful places, both uh, land, water, sea, mountains throughout the Philippines. And we like to do it because it's like we're paid travelers. So we get to, um, we've been to, for example, tomorrow I'll be in Chargao. So we'll look into how to uh, develop tourism there. Uh, we're in Palawan often, so Coron, um, some parts of uh, Boswanga, Puerto Princesa, Clint Hagedorn is here from Puerto Princesa, so we've done a lot of work there. Ilocos Norte as well, which we're so proud of because in just three years, their tourism arrivals grew by more than 5%. So of course, a lot of it is because of good governance and implementation, but they also started with a good plan. So I'll be talking mostly about San Vicente, Palawan. So it's a plan that we're currently working on. It's 165,000 hectares and they have the longest beach in the Philippines. Actually, the longest white beach in the Philippines. It's 14 kilometers long. So that's one thing that keeps us busy now. Uh, and we're doing it with uh, both with the municipal government of San Vicente as well as the Tourism, Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority. So just uh, last year, we had 4.6 million tourists, so still very low compared to our uh, ASEAN neighbors, but uh, it has grown quite much uh, compared to uh, recent uh, administrations at least. The Department of Tourism projects that by 2020, we'll have 7 million tourism arrivals. And last year, there were 10% more in terms of uh, receipts, so 4.84. And these are the top destinations. Boracay is the third, um, mostly from Calibo Airport. Cebu and Manila is still number one. So some key principles. Uh, one is really to enhance and leverage existing uses and strength. So this is something that we have to keep reminding uh, ourselves, decision makers in the built and the natural environment. Because sometimes we keep building, thinking, okay, we're so uh, focused on increasing the number of rooms, increasing the floor area, and whatnot. For example, Boracay, people have forgotten that we all are brought to Boracay in the first place because of the beach, but we're not even uh, protecting that one main amenity. So even the 25-meter setback, which is already quite short, people have been um, abusing it. So that's the beach of uh, San Vicente. So it's really as far as your eyes can see. You see fine sand. Um, but the rest of the town as well uh, has several waterfalls and uh, lakes, spring waters, and uh, really beautiful forests and mangroves. One interesting thing here is that we're really uh, starting with a clean slate, which oftentimes you, know, you would think it's easier compared to planning a place like San Juan City or Manila because it's, it's raw land. But at the same time, um, it's challenging because of the land speculation. So just in the last uh, three years since they announced that we were doing the master plan, the land values have already doubled. So there's not much there yet, but already people are selling for about six to 7,000 per square meter, which I think is very overpriced. So the big developers all have a stake now, the big landowners all have a stake in San Vicente, Palawan now. But at the same time, um, we're all in sync in terms of wanting to do it right, finally, with this um, town. Second uh, principle is to protect so really to plan sustainably and to keep thinking of the long-term success for the greater number of people. Most of the um, residents of San Vicente are really farmers. Every time um, there's an offer for land, they just want to sell, of course, the beachfront, thinking that the agriculture side is more valuable to them. And one thing that we're always um, uh, trying to protect now is the important agriculture land because we wouldn't want all of it to be um, converted. Also avoiding what happened to, for example, millions or even billions of our taxpayers' money have been spent to irrigate places like Cavite and now it's all full of um, residential subdivisions. So in the same way, we have to protect uh, agriculture land because they are valuable. Of course, the people are important. So most of the residents are uh, below the poverty threshold. They only know basic skills um, and the main livelihood are fishing and farming. And uh, when you're we talking to the, some of the leaders there, they were saying uh, a common occurrence now is death by Tanduay because suddenly um, they have so much money because uh, people are paying them cash for their waterfront, which they never really appreciated more than a source of their food. 
and then now they have so much money they don't know how to spend it they don't even have banks there so it's a first class LGU local government unit but they don't have banks so the challenge is to make sure that the local residents stay there because they're a part of keeping the identity of the town and of course when the developments do happen it would be good to have the source of employees to be from the local uh, population. This is not in San Vicente but it's also in Palau and it's Malcapuya Island in Coron. And one good thing about Coron is that they have set a limit in their island developments. So a maximum of the 25% of the total land can be built on. The rest have to be kept as open space. And what we did for uh, Malcapuya Island is that we only built on less than 25% and all the buildings are on stilt. So actually there's not much footprint on the island. So back to San Vicente. Um, so we, we often uh, give them uh, perspectives when we do tourism plans. So they have a clear picture of uh, the possibilities. And then um, indigenous land. So they have three uh, tribes in um, San Vicente. One um, and the thing that we always encounter when we do planning is that data is very limited in the Philippines. So we depend a lot on uh, stakeholders so of course it all sounds nice and it's public participation, we're getting them involved, but actually we're using a lot of their information and their data. So for example, on this long beach, um, there's not much information about risks from storm surge and flooding, but it was actually the indigenous people who told us that, you know, their uh, chieftain or their um, grandparents would tell them about uh, this incident several years ago. So it all are part of inputs for our planning. We also uh, show them possibilities because uh, a lot of the, our local towns, no, and it was even similar, for example, when we did a plan for Panglao Island in Bohol. We start with asking them, okay, so what are your um, possible attractions and destinations? And it's, there's always this feeling of smallness that, oh, you know, we don't have much in this town. We only have mangroves. We only have this. We only have that. So it's, it's a good uh, exercise with them as well because we're able to show them that, you know, you can actually make a tourist destination out of your mangroves, out of your coconut trees, out of your uh, mountains from from trekking, for example, and from camping. Third principle is to connect. So in terms of transport links um, among cities, among our regions, and of course to the rest of the world. And aside from transport, linking cultural, leisure, and commercial destinations. Whenever you do plans, by the way, and uh, budgeting, there's this uh, challenge. Do you first um, provide the facilities and hope the tourists would come? or you wait for the tourists to be there, make sure there's already demand, and then you catch up with the uh, supply of uh, infrastructures and utilities. So for San Vicente, it's more of the second choice. I mean, the second option. San Vicente, actually the runway has been there for uh, maybe six years already, but the terminal is still under construction. And there was this, um, it was part of a bigger Palawan plan, and they were choosing between putting the northern Palawan airport in San Vicente or in El Nido, but they chose San Vicente instead. And um, even without uh, much room set, there are less than 100 rooms currently in San Vicente. We had already planned their network for them in terms of roads and public transport. So there are 10 barangays, and uh, there, we uh, grouped them into four clusters. So each cluster already that has designated their own ports, their own docks, uh, their own connections in terms of roadway, and we had also recommended um, rail links. Even in terms of islands, um, to those of you who, for example, have been to Coron, uh, there's no clear planning and checking in terms of where the boats are, where the tourists are. So sometimes in one destination, in Kayangan Lake, there are 20 boats there. Well, there's none in another area, for example, the Twin Lakes. So in San Vicente, um, the main docks, uh, there are clear um, entry and exit points for island hopping, and it's, there's a clear count of where tourists are. So as mentioned earlier, of course, public transport is always uh, much more preferred compared to uh, private vehicles. We are designing San Vicente to be walkable and bikeable. Fourth principle is to care. Before a place can become a good tourist destination, it should first be a good urban area, a good environment, a good community. This um, was uh, proven from numbers that have uh, been gotten primarily from Puerto Princesa, but it also applies to the whole of Palawan. So every tourist that comes to Palawan, there's an additional person employed. 
and uh, for every additional tourist, their average family income increases by 7 centavos. It's really not much, but imagine the multiplier effect once uh, there are more and more proper uh, tourism developments in the islands. Of course, you provide integrated neighborhoods, and uh, we don't plan it as if everyone is there uh, in their beach attire and visiting a few days in a year. So of course, there are people who will be working there. So going back to Boracay, no one has ever thought that there will be so-and-so number of employees, of boatmen, of uh, resort um, workers, of uh, government officials that will have to be there. So it was really an afterthought in terms of where to put these facilities. And there were people who fell in love with the island, so now there's a demand for schools, there's a demand for a landfill, for areas for their sewage, for drainage and whatnot. So we have had to think about this ahead and we did projections. For example, if we don't do anything uh, for a, a medium kind of uh, projection or if, it, if uh, we go aggressive with development in Palawan. So there are on-site and off-site facilities for healthcare, for education, from residents, both those that are already there and those that we foresee will want to relocate in San Vicente. So as mentioned, it's a huge town, it's 165,000 hectares, and total coastline is uh, 285 kilometers. So there are 22 identified islands. One of the islands, it's called Buayan Island. For those of you who watch the movie The Beach, um, the author stayed in Buayan Island for about six months. So the people from San Vicente are insisting, maybe he wrote the book in, uh, while he was in Buayan Island in San Vicente. Population is only 30,500 people, and um, last year the tourist arrivals were only 9,000. And uh, in terms of the local residents, so half of them are below the poverty incidence, and 10% uh, of them have no access to water sources. Fifth principle is to promote. We're doing quite well. Our tourism ministry is doing quite well in terms of promoting uh, Philippines for tourism, and they did it at a very little budget. And uh, we're guided by that as well. The, it's more fun in the Philippines. Now, in the same minute earlier, I said when we do city plans, it's a collaborative effort. It's more so the same for uh, tourism planning. And we're very lucky to really be involved in San Vicente because they were given that support from Piazza. So aside from um, our own uh, experts, team of professionals, we had to work with a sociologist, uh, an economist, a uh, financial expert, marketing, um, environmentalist, uh, forester, and a few other um, consultants. And this is what we came up with, with JLL, who was our marketing consultant. Six principles to collaborate. We had several stakeholder consultations, and it was funny, the how diverse it was. So we started with one in the basketball court, very hot, and there were uh, indigenous people, there were uh, fishermen, um, tricycle drivers, boatmen, and uh, farmers. And then the other uh, meetings were mostly in Manila because of the landowners. Varying concerns, but really it was interesting that um, whether they were landowners who've never been, some actually have never been to uh, San Vicente, they were more of uh, speculators who wanted to be a part of the the whole buzz and uh, also the inputs from the people who were there every day uh, really common inputs that uh, they wanted uh, actually the common answer was please we don't want to be another barakay so we had several workshops with them we started with asking them what are your aspirations for yourself and for your town they helped us with the SWOT analysis they mapped for us key features like for example um, they told us about lakes that no one ever told us about or hot springs. When we did a similar exercise in Ilocos Norte, we had it with all the 23 mayors present. And the governor was surprised to know that there were dolphins in the province. So it's really good to involve um, everyone in these participative uh, processes. This is Long Beach, so in, it's in the one of the four clusters we identified in the plan. And. Um, the National Tourism Development Plan identifies three main uh, themes in terms of uh, grouping the destinations all over the Philippines. Sun, and, sun sand, and sea. The other is uh, adventure, and the other one is uh, for uh, mountains. So we consider that as well. Um, 
one thing important is to make sure that um, we try to target. Of course, it's good to have a uh, target uh, tourists, but of course, uh, we have to diversify the activities because if you go all the way there, okay, great. After swimming the long beach, what do I do now? So we had to think about um, destinations and activities for if you're staying there for one day, for two days, some for even uh, two weeks. These are some uh, features of the master plan. Um, we really uh, made it a priority to keep the fisherman's village because it helps with the whole um, uh, sense of identity and sense of place and to make sure that the fishermen are protected and they're not all uh, bought out later on. So there's a range, of course, considering um, the kind of, uh, of owners that have invested in San Vicente, it's really towards um, resorts, uh, second homes, as well as some support facilities. So these are some perspectives that we did. And a key feature is in Palawan and in Boracay and Bohol, there's a height limit set, which is don't put a structure higher than the coconut tree. And uh, we found out that actually does more harm than good. One, because if there is a tsunami, you won't be saved if you climb the coconut tree. And the other is, um, for example, again, Boracay, uh, there's, you have that uh, height limit, so people are forced to build out. So it's like a wall-to-wall -wall type of development. And you see it when you walk around um, Panglao, some places in Cebu, and in Boracay. So what we recommend instead is ascending building heights. So as you are farther from the beachfront, you're allowed to go higher. But there's a limit as well in terms of footprint. So. Uh, the higher you are, you have a limit. You can only build on 50% of your property. And the rest of it should be for pedestrian access, for utilities, infrastructure, and for open spaces. So as mentioned earlier, our laws only require 25 meter setbacks from the average high tide. So surveyors would measure uh, throughout a year where's the average high tide mark on the coastline. So we recommended increasing it to 50 meters. So this is to me, the most difficult part of uh, encouraging the landowners and the local government because they've been paying, of course, they've invested already, they bought the property and they've been paying taxes for it. You know, not just in Palawan, in other places, you will see the titles for land right on the sea. I've seen a title in Iloilo City up to 100 meters of the sea. So how, how come we're getting, we're giving titles to uh, you know, places that are supposed to be protected. So this is where, where we took quite long because the landowners came before the restrictions. And our benchmarks were Nusa Dua in Bali and uh, Jeju and Korea. So we had to explain to the authorities because they were so strict on the 50 meters while the landowner private uh, sector wanted 25 meters. We had to explain to them that it's difficult because it's like you're taking their property rights from them. So let's find the balance. So the balance was uh, we increase it to 30 meters, absolutely nothing. And then between the 30 to 50 meters, there's an allowable uh, list of uh, a list of allowable uses. <laughs>